This video shows the recommended method to route fiber in AFL's Apex Sealed Splice Closure Basket. Cable preparation lengths for Apex vary by cable and application. Refer to the written instructions or Apex cable length table located at aflglobal.com forward slash Apex. The recommended tools for the Apex closure are basic cable tools and a can wrench, plus all locally required safety equipment. Once all cables and small cable bushings on cables less than one half inch have been installed, tighten with a can wrench all gel compression screws, including screws on the unused cable ports. This is easier to do before trays have been reinstalled. All six screws must be in the fully compressed position for the closure to seal. There is a positive stop once gel compression is complete. There is a spring tensioning sound, which is normal during compression. When routing any type of fiber or tubes in the apex basket, there are some generalizations to follow. The basket is designed to utilize many options for the incoming and outgoing fiber or tubes to be secured in multiple locations. These retention slots are designed to accommodate both Velcro and tie wraps. Tie wraps may be used on tubing, loose tube, ribbon, or transition tubes. The soft side of Velcro straps should be used with AFL's spiderweb ribbon and all other fiber types. AFL foam retention may also be used with spiderweb ribbon or bare ribbon. Transition tube may be used with flat ribbon or spiderweb ribbon. The final method to secure the fiber is based on local practice or cable manufacturer recommendations. The length of the mid-sheath opening, noted in the length table, uses a center cut loop that allows either side or both to be spliced. This length allows for one pass in the basket with no service loop and then transitions behind the yoke to the splice tray. In the splice tray, there is enough slack to make a complete loop and before splicing. This is applicable for all types of fiber loose tube, ribbon or spiderweb ribbon. Fiber trays have removable splice chips as well as interim pathways to improve fiber routing options. Fibers or tubes should exit the basket and cross behind the apex splicing yoke to secure to the tray on the opposite side. This defines the proper slack when opening trays. Basket tabs can be removed for easier access to the basket and replaced later. Simply squeeze the sides and rotate out. Note orientation for later replacement. Coiling for flat ribbon is shown in this video, but the process is the same with spiderweb ribbon, ribbon and loose tube. Input fibers should be secured near the yoke with Velcro or tie wrap. The standard length in the table is defined as one pass of the basket, then exit to transition to splice tray. This outbound fiber or tube should be retained loosely until fiber is secured in the splice tray. Mid-sheath or slack loops are stored in the basket with up to four points of retention. Carefully place the fiber bundles or tubes in a figure eight pattern, alternating direction to reduce twist. Once the last coil is in place, Fiber in the basket is typically retained with Velcro using the soft side to the fiber or tubes. Make sure the fiber or tubes are secured and clear of all basket tabs. Install the splice tray and begin splicing. An alternative way to splice using Apex is to remove the splice trays and dress fiber or tubes over the basket to the splice tray. This will not work with the Apex inner basket. The length is defined as a sheath to tray length in the length table in the written instructions. This allows multiple splicers to simultaneously splice independent splice trays. Once the splicing is complete and trays are covered, Bring tray to basket and rotate for the first figure eight at the top of the basket. Bring fiber or tubes with tray behind the yoke and rotate in the opposite direction.
lower tray to applicable location, and secure tray in yoke. Dress fiber or tubes in the basket and secure once all trays are installed. The fibers or tubes exiting the basket will be on the outer portion of the basket and do not interfere with the tray fiber when in raised or lowered positions. In the case of hybrid fiber splicing, the ribbon or spiderweb ribbon should be secured in the center of the basket. Route and secure the loose tube on the upper edges of the basket to prevent damage to lower bundle. This is the same for all types of branch fibers. The apex inner cover can also separate two groups of fiber, ribbon and loose tube cable and backbone and drop cables. All basket tabs must be removed. The inner tray will be installed on the mounting pins below the splice tray retention on the yoke. Bring the inner basket to yoke and set one side on mounting holes. Rotate the inner basket and secure in second mounting hole. Bring the inner tray to the upper position and let it lock in place. Ensure all fiber or tubes in the lower basket are secured and clear of any potential damage. Firmly grasp inner basket and lower into place. Depress each side latch to snap in place to lower basket. To open the inner basket, simply squeeze inner basket locking tabs from the designated keyhole and lift. Lock the inner basket in the upper position. If the inner basket needs to be removed, simply disengage mounting pins on one side using a sheath knife or similar tool. Rotate the inner basket to disengage second mounting position and remove. Fibers and tubes routed to the inner basket are secured similar to the lower basket with Velcro or tie wraps in multiple locations on the inner basket. Verify that fiber or tubes are secure with enough slack to raise and lower the inner basket without pinching fibers or kinking tubes. Check all slack under the yoke and adjust as needed. Prepare to secure fibers or tubes in the splice tray.